you're like me, your time in the woods is precious. You know, I work a lot, but when I get an opportunity to hunt, I am going to take advantage of it. Uh, today, I didn't get a chance to get real far from home, but I got great conditions here. The weather's perfect. Uh, got a lot of acorns on the ground, and, and when I don't have much time to hunt, I try to hunt a little bit more aggressively. Got my grunt call, my rattling horns, and I'm going to see if I can make something happen today. She'd open the star pickles. Did you tell her I was hunting? Listen, go back and tell her I'm hunting, all right? And tell her to quit frying that bacon. It's right downwind of where I'm trying to hunt. Hunting with your hands tied. And y'all turn the TV down, too. You ever wonder what it'd be like to take a deer during deer season? Oh, I don't know. I'd feel kind of curious. Wouldn't it be able to drive around where everybody could look at it? Oh, that makes my skin crawl. Well, yeah, I just, that don't sit right with me. No, sir. He's crazier than an outhouse rat. You know, to have good deer hunting, you need a good place to deer hunt. And in most parts of this country today, that means hunting club dues. Now, as president of our hunting club, it's my obligation to make the other members feel like there's always the possibility of a giant buck out there in the woods. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Hey, Jimmy, come here and look what I got this morning. Now, this morning, I have shot a real nice eight-point deer. What you got there? Look at that. Hey, <laughs> man, God, look at that. Oh. You feel good? Yeah, man, you got, a, you got a prize winner, man. You must have got the granddaddy. <laughs> Actually, he was the littlest buck I saw this morning. You should have seen the one with him. Man, I guarantee you this dude had a set of horns that wide. I, I could have stood in the middle of him. He was bigger than this one? Oh, yeah, a lot bigger, a lot bigger. You're kidding me. Uh-uh. No! Hmm. Man, man, I can't believe that. Actually, there was, there was another one with him. I never could count the points on him, but, man, I guarantee you his horns was as big as the arm where it come out of his head. Well, why didn't you shoot him? Uh... He was behind a tree. I never oh, could get man. a. Never could get a. That's too bad. But look at there, man! I hadn't seen one. You've seen three. No, actually, I saw four. There was there was one on the edge of the woods. Never would come out. That I swear was was the biggest one of all. I'm telling you, man, this deer looked like an elk. He might have been an elk. I don't know. Maybe an elk got out of the state park and wandered over here or something. Man, I can't believe that. Where were you? Down there in the cornfield, down the Cadillac stand, back here in the back end. Yeah. Man, man. I'm gonna man. run him to the taxidermist. You wanna go with me? Ah. Uh, I'd like to, but uh, I'm gonna walk over by the cornfield. You sure? Yeah, just take a little walk over okay. there and you know, just see I'll what's catch up going with you. on. Yeah. Where there's hope, there's hunting club dues. And that's your redneck hunting tip of the week. Hey, it's in the back edge there on the right. The back edge? Yeah, the yeah, the real back edge. Oh, appreciate it. All right. Okay, I'd like to welcome the entire herd to the pre-hunting season meeting that we have every year. Want to say the herd looks good. Uh, want to thank the Lord for a mild winter. Uh, want to talk about the things that we talk about every year. Joining me today is uh, Coach Buck. Some of you may not know him. Coach Buck was not originally from our area, but he expanded his home range and joined us last year. And uh, though he's not a real mature buck, you can learn a lot from listening to Coach Buck here. He, uh, he's seen a lot of tragedy in his three and a half years. Saw his mother take an arrow when he was just six months old. Uh, coach himself has had hair skin off of him in several places. You young bucks in the back, now y'all listen up. You know, you want to cut up every year at the meeting, and you always end up paying the price. You're going to be crying on opening morning. All right, first thing we want to talk about is feeding schedule. We're going to go with the same schedule that we've used for the last two or 3,000 years. Mornings and evenings, does and does with fawns come out first, followed by young bucks. And please, all of you, quit looking back in the woods at other deer coming out you're costing us valuable position with that you're giving us away just sit there and eat don't be looking back in the woods every time you hear somebody else coming out all right last we want the big bucks staging in the edge of the woods do not come out till dark i know i say this every year dark means dark a lot of you want to come out early your stomach start rumbling you end up riding in a pickup truck when you do that people 
In the mornings last year, we had a lot of you lingering too long in the fields. Get back in the beds. In fact, it cost us our leader, Buck Sr., who, uh, Coach Buck, I'd like for you to say a few words about him. But first, I would like to take a quick moment of silence for all the deer that are not back with the herd this year from last year, whether through hunting or automobile accidents. Coach Buck. Thank you, Buck. You all knew Buck Sr. You knew his rack, knew his scent. We all looked up to him. Nobody looked up to him more than I did. He, he taught me how to rub and scrape. In fact, he was like a father to me. You know, I, uh, I never knew my real father. He, uh, he got my mother pregnant and ran off. And it's tough on a young buck walking through the woods, through the fields. Every buck you pass, you wonder, is that my daddy? And you start comparing your rack with his, and... <laughs> oh, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I'll go browse real quick. We'll be right back. Buck? 